Bobo, we're back here again. I chatted to you after the Ulster final and you'd got over the line that day by a margin, quite a margin. Today, it wasn't really like that now. You went to extra time in the end. How no. are you feeling? Oh, look, we knew it was going to be tough when you get to the last four in Ireland. It's it's not going to be easy. And, you know, yes, everybody was saying Kirkou's going to, you know, we were red hot favourites, but deep down we knew that St Finbars were no walkover and, and they proved that today, you know. And just talk to me about what it was like out here on the pitch. Looking up from the media box, it was very physical. It was seriously tough. The turnovers were something else. They were happening at both ends. Talk to me a little bit about that. I have a sore throat here from shouting. Uh, the noise was crazy. So the, I was shouting at boys 10 yards away and they weren't even listening to me. And oh, it was just, oh, it was heart attack stuff at times. You know, it was, uh, it was one of them games where it just flew in, you know. Looking back on it, I'd be like, Jesus, how do we even get over the line? You know, playing in a game like that, you know, it's a fair play to some members. They're, they're some team, you know, and if they stick at it, you know, they have a, they have a bright future, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you yourself, you stepped up to a few of the frees. Um, I think you got over three. Three? Yeah, missed yeah. One. you missed one. You I got three. One, That's all right. We'll let you away with that. Yeah. But it's serious pressure. Like, oh. nerves of steel, especially in the tension and pressure that went on and extra time, especially. It's, it's, it's sort of, it's, 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 it's just something you practice. It's the nights away from the football field and you're practicing on your own. And to be honest, when you're, when you're hitting kicks like that, you don't really notice any, anything around you. You know, you just stick to your routine and, and hope they'll go over. And, you know, fortunately, two or three of them went over and, and look at it and it helped, it helped us push on and, you know, got us over the line. But, you know, it's only a semi-final. There's not a one yet. So we're back at it in the morning, recovery and, and, and train Monday night. And the fans here were something else from, from both sides. Yeah. yeah, it really was electric yeah. now today. It, it was different. The the songs were really being sung out loud. How yeah. did, did you hear that from oh, the pitch? I, I, fair play to the Finbar supporters. It was actually good crack, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so man. yeah, they had everything, you know. So uh, they did it well orchestrated, you no. Know, but hey, look, fair play to them. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's their their journey's only starting. Yeah. To be honest, they're yes, they've a couple of uh, older boys there, but the heart of the team's young. Mm -hmm. You know, if they stick at it, future's bright. But yeah, the supporters was mad at times. And was, they were shouting and roaring, and you try and hit a kick out. You know, it's not easy. <laughs> say and so you're one step away from the goal the goal is the all-ireland final you were there yeah. in 2019 you left it behind just that day that's what a few of you said to me after the ulster final um a few weeks ago so you're really hoping to really get over the line this time yeah look uh we'll we'll assess it a couple of years ago it's still hurting you know there's no i'm not going to lie about it but we've given ourselves an opportunity we're there and look we're in the final and that's the goal in all ireland and that that's it and what about for you? You're a media master now. After the last day, we, we had the chats and you went viral. I, I think I'm a face for radio, the boys were saying. <laughs> and Conlet there, your coach, as he was walking away, he said, don't say anything about going out and don't say anything about pizza. No, no, no. I actually, t t I'm not going to lie to you, I stayed down last night and at, me and an boy went for a pizza at 12 o'clock. And I actually, I actually think it helped me. Pizza before yeah. the game. Yeah, I had a pizza last night, so uh, it paid off there. I think I've burnt it off. <laughs> mind you, but you burnt I, it off with all those runs for yeah. the freeze up and back to the goal. No, I'm a goalie, so I don't like running at the best of times. But look, I have the time to get over the line. That's the most important thing. Brilliant. Well, I'll let you go. Congratulations and best Thank of luck you. at the All Ireland final. Thank you. Stephen Sherlock, commiserations, a really tough game. Koku just got over the line, just in the end, an extra time. How are you feeling after that? Um, look, we're half broken to be honest like these opportunities don't really come around that often um, but, you know Cork County Club Championship is so competitive and the Munster is so competitive and then getting into the All-Ireland Series is definitely uh, as competitive too and we're just we're, we're devastated but look we have to kind of look on the, the bright side of life at the moment like you know with everything that's gone on the last two years like we're we're very lucky to be in this situation you know, where we are and look from our perspective like we've had a fantastic year but to not go the extra way that we wanted to us, it's heartbreaking for us. And coming into this game, you've definitely come in with a tag of underdogs. You know, they were red hot favourites, Kilku, coming into this, and you really put it up to them and had a time there. You know, we thought you were going to do it. Did you come up with a tactical plan that really sort of matched them today? Um, no, like all year we've kind of been building, um, you know, with the Cork Club Championship now. Uh, if you want to win, a, a if you want to get to a county final, you're playing six championship games 
nearly every two weeks and that's very competitive you know it's a great system and if you kind of go far than that you kind of build up a bit of momentum and then going into Munster you kind of build up even a bit more momentum so we knew kind of coming into this and even going into the Austin Stacks game that we were we were very well uh, we were very well placed and look we just came up here we came up as raging underdogs and look we gave it everything and I couldn't be prouder of all the lads and just the whole backroom team and even the supporters and everything up there, like you know, um, it's like it's like the Stratford end up there at some stage. It's like you know, uh, but like you know, it just means so much to the club, um, and we're very grateful for all the support that we got throughout the year. And um, look, we'll we'll be back. We'll sit down. We'll we'll dwell on this result. But look, it's to be going in as that much underdogs and put up a fight like that. Like in some sense, you'd be kind of gutted that you're after losing, but in another sense, it can kind of give you a bit of confidence going forward, and hopefully we we'll, we'll look on the bright side of that. Definitely, and just speaking on those supporters, they're well able to sing. They've abandoned all that came through at the start. It was it was really special to watch, and you can see what they really mean to all of you. How physical was it out there on the pitch? Because that's one thing, looking up in the press box, it looked tough. Oh, yeah, look, it was, it was a tough game. It was end-to-end. -end. Uh, you know how football has developed over the years, like, you know, um, so like we're, we we thought that we'd match them for fitness too, like you know. But I suppose a few of us came up, uh, so we just gave it everything in 60 minutes, and you know, sometimes that could drain you, you know, here and there um, when you don't get over the line. Uh, but look, we have to give credit to Kilku as well. They they were fantastic as well. Uh, they were serious outfit and wish them all the best of luck in the final. And last thing, just for yourself, I think it was 10 points, it could have been more. I was losing track on the sheet of what you scored today. You were exceptional and all of those pressurised kicks that you were stepping up to, to keep them in the game, to level the game, it was just remarkable. Yeah, look, I suppose, uh, there's two sides that I don't think I scored from play. Um, so, like, you know, my job is to take frees and my job is to put them over. So, but, like, you see the amount of lads that won frees, that broke the line, drew the frees. So, like it's a, it's a team team collective. Like we we that's that's our motto the whole time. Uh, and look, at the end of the day, I, I'm there to take frees, and that's my job. And oh, thank, thankfully, a few of them went over now today to support and lads. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Conleth 118 to 113 in the end here in Port Leash. Dramatic game. How are you feeling after that one? Is the heart still going? Yeah, it is. I won't have much uh, throat left tomorrow. But look. Uh, it was a game that ebbed and flowed. You know, the bars were very, very good for long periods. And I think probably the experience of having been an extra time a couple of times already this year probably stood to us. And just to talk about the dramatics. So there was a time there that Paul Devlin had a chance at the end of normal time to put it over the bar. He had a free and that would have been it. That would have been the game over and he would have won by a point. But unfortunately, Aidan Brannigan was sent off. Um, did you see it properly? Was it a red card? Yeah, look, I've seen it in normal time. You know, I, I would love to say, well, I'll have to say it again. Um, at normal time, the player was encroaching on Paul, you know, making noise, stuff you're not allowed. Aidan went over and shouldered him. The guy went down, was what it looked like to me. It looked a very harsh red card. But, look, until I would see it again, you know, I, I just wouldn't know enough about it. Um, but I thought, you know, in terms of the game, you know, it would be totally out of character for him. Absolutely, he's a lot of experience, yeah, so understandable. And after that then, those tensions were high, I'm sure, going into that dressing room then for extra time. How did you just calm everything down and tell the lads, right, forget about what's happened and let's focus? Yeah, well, look, we just kept them on the field. You know, whenever the adrenaline was pumping, we kept them on the field, things calmed down a wee bit. And, and then we walked into the dressing room. So, um, it, look, it was calm. It was really, really calm in there. Um, and that's the one thing that Mickey brings. Um, you know, Mickey brings the calmness and, you know, it's just great for the players that they can react to that. And, you know, having been an extra time before, you know, they know the pitfalls of coming in with too much energy and trying to be too pumped up because, you know, once you get out onto the pitch again, you kind of lost that. So it's trying to use as much energy you can as, as the game goes on in extra time because, like, it was energy sapping stuff. I think there was cramping and people go down all over the place. And Cuckoo's fitness definitely came out on top in the end. But there was a chance many times that Finbars could have won the game. But a lot of people say, Cuckoo, they know how to win. Even when you're down two points, three points, you know how to win. And they just kept their heads and kept trucking along. Yeah, look, those stages that Finbars looked like they were going to break out on top, but I just thought in the second half, well, they got the goal. Finbars got the goal against the run of play, you know, it was a good turnover from them, um, and that sort of allowed them to play the game at their pace. They had the breeze in that first half, but I thought once we get into the game, we never really got in their proper rhythm um, in normal time, but we just done enough and done enough, and you know, I thought towards the end we'd 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 kick on and, and get that point, but look, you know, hopefully the extra time, you know, isn't detrimental in the stands to come final time.
And looking ahead now to the All-Ireland Final, back where you want to be, 2019, you were there, you probably left it behind you that day, you'd probably feel like, how are you feeling for that? I know you don't know who you have just yet. Yeah, look, they're, they're such a special occasion and I suppose the boys have been there and, and obviously the, the hype and, you know, the excitement about it. But when you don't win, it, it just makes it a real damn squib. So, look, they've been there, they've had that feeling, they know what it's like and, you know, look, we'll just be working as hard as we can just to never feel that way again. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Fennel. Ashley, thank you. Thank you.